Thank you for joining me for another My First White Dwarf video. And today we have Craig Mark from the Life of Die podcast. All right, buddy. So let's let's crack on. Sure thing. With uh, uh, issue 140. Now I brought you on. Now you're actually a co-host with um, a, a mutual friend of ours, Gordon, on the yep. Life of Die podcast. I yeah, that's right. I jump in sometimes to give my hand with uh, some of the epic content. That's that's kind of main. That's our kind of main passion between us. Is uh, has been epic, and um, although he, he does a lot more on the kind of two thousand and eight AD side as well um, by himself. Right. Now I saw your Space Hulk playthrough the other day. That was quite good. Oh yeah, that, yeah. That was that wasn't me actually. It was um that was a, oh. that was our other gaming buddy. That was uh, Chris. Who's, right. Um, who's is well into Space Hulk, and it's funny enough. He's he's dragged us all back into that dark hole with them again um, so I'm actually painting up some uh, some Terminators today <laughs> to, to take out the next time um, but yeah we've, we've kind of dived back into that and he's creating some kind of custom homebrew missions and stuff again so it's it's really good fun Right, I'll put some links in the show notes too to check out the Life of Die as um, yeah, Gordon has posted up a lot of videos related yeah. to Epic and your podcasts and that kind of stuff and the mm -hmm. videos now with your guys playing i noticed yeah he's playing some games as well so he's got some game videos there yeah we've actually got a few games of them um, or we've got one game of epic in, in the can and um, to be released and working on a couple more um in the schedule as well so that'll be that'll be great to get some oh, more right, epic so content out there right yeah. yeah i'm really looking forward to that then because um yeah i'm a sucker for uh, epic that's for sure <laughs> as you know so we've got yeah issue 140 um now what year was this release mate do you know this is 1991, uh, August 1991, yeah. Right. It's actually seven issues before I f first found or discovered my first White Dwarf. Oh, wow, well, yeah. I was 147, so. Yeah, well, this, this is a funny one. It's, it's it's one that was, it was I was probably too young to pick this up myself at the time, but my brother, who was about 10 years older, he was um he was kind of well in there at the start, so I think I think he kind of got into maybe yeah probably issue one thirty ish certainly one thirty one through to forty there was there was lots of content for Space Crusade and Space Hulk um and Fantasy Battle Roleplay which he was doing as well so yeah there's I remember these floating around the house and I think maybe this one just sticks in my mind so much because of the the cover and the the bright yellow border around it um. And all the pretty pictures inside it, because I was far too young to understand any of the rules or anything. But, but yeah, the, the pictures in this one are fantastic. Yeah, it's got a Golden Demon special as well, as we as we talked yep. about before. So we're looking forward to seeing the entries for the 91 uh, Golden Demons uh, for, I think it's for the UK and uh, the US and like North America. Yeah. That's it. So That's right, yeah. Uh, now, this is the Warhammer role, Fantasy Roleplay Supplements Um mm -hmm. Were you a role player back in the day, mate? Not at all. No, I, I kind of only really got into role playing in the last kind of last decade, really. Again, through Gordon. Um, so yeah, I hadn't had no hadn't touched on it at all. But like I say, my brother had a little bit of um, he had some of the, the gear for the fancy role play. I'm not sure how much um, how much he actually played it, but yeah, I remember some of the stuff floating around in the in their kind of shared hobby box for a long time. Yeah, these are great. Great covers. I just love the artworks and that kind of thing. Yeah. I wasn't really big into role playing myself either, but I just loved all the, especially the Les Edwards and. Um, There's a Paul Bonner as well, isn't there? In there, for, bit of Paul Bonner, yeah. John Blanche, of course. How can I forget him? But yeah, there's only one. There's only one John Blanche. There's only yeah, one absolutely. John Blanche, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, so going through the contents, we've got some uh, the, the usual suspects down the bottom here. We've got uh, Robin Jews, Rick Chrisley, Jervis Johnson, Mike McVeigh, and Andy Jones. Yep. Uh, looking very, or looking very young and, and chipper at that point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely they are. Uh, but yeah, this is a short, pretty short issue as we talked about before as well. Because yeah, it's a it's a funny one, isn't it? There's not actually much. I think I think this is a kind of almost like a kind of turning point for White Dwarf again, where it went from being that kind of hobby, pure hobby magazine to you know almost a bit of a catalog and a and a kind of way of keeping up with new releases. But I don't think there's actually any real new releases in this at all it's, um, it's mostly just the well as we'll see in a second it's mostly just the beautiful pictures from from golden demon yeah which i think would be the most the, the main focus of our conversation today anyway yeah. but uh, we'll just scan through these it's got the national gaming leagues um i think we sort of covered these before and other issues 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not something I realised was such a thing back in the day, the kind of tournament scene. Yeah. So I'm quite quite interested to see. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see what kind of lists people were bringing to those just to see if they were kind of power gaming back then or not. <laughs> well, things like things like a National League for Advanced Hero Quest, which is quite funny, you know, like... Yeah, it's had, crazy. Had, like, yeah, like leagues of teams of adventurers and they'd fight in, in, the, um, in these dungeons and fight against each other and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know either, mate. I didn't know these things were around until just recently too, just mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. White Dwarves. Yeah. But we've got a really classic Phil Lewis uh, modelling workshop here with a fancy bar, probably the most iconic piece of terrain, especially for 4th and 5th edition, uh, mm-hmm. people who would know it and love it and have probably try to build it, like myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, get their fingers covered in shingles and then gave up after super gluing a thousand yeah. <laughs> shingles to their hands. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a labor of love doing those. <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful piece. That it's mm-hmm. it looks really simplistic, but I think to pull that off. Yeah, I mean, I've certainly I've certainly attempted similar in the past and failed miserably. So yeah, the fact that they've, they've they made it look so good is is impressive. And as I said, balsa wood and card, and obviously Phil, Phil goes through the whole thing. But you can see the foreground there, there's, been, there's Andy Chambers' uh, famous Skaven army. Yeah. Oh, they're lovely. <laughs> lovely rats. Yep. But I love all, the, I love all these workshop uh, articles. Very- yeah, they're really inspiring, weren't they? They were kind of yeah. giving you a bit of a... Uh, I mean, it's, it's the most creative part of the hobby. If you if you think about the train, but siding belts, it's you know really from scratch. You're not you're not painting someone else's work. You're really trying to do something unique, and it's uh, uh, it's great to get a wee kind of jump board or springboard with these articles into that. Yep, all you needed was some balsa wood and some mounting board, like for uh, for making for paintings and that kind of thing. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, ambulance on standby as well with those craft knives. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, there was uh, it always you know, made a, a good point of cutting away from yourself, not towards yourself. That's right. Very good thing to uh, to get the habit of. But there's Phil putting it all together. Uh, what I didn't actually know until when I saw this article that actually had an outhouse. Yeah, that's right. He gives he gives you some um, some some lean to kind of um, templates as well. So yeah, it's quite cool. Yeah, there you go. So you can build it as it is, just the way he did it. Just by photocopying that and then using it as a stencil, put some pins, I think pins in each corner, mm-hmm. and then you know, trace and cut and away you go. So yeah, really, really good. I love how they did all those um, modeling workshop articles. They proved yeah, to be very, good. very useful for the young modeler. Like mm-hmm, definitely. Yeah. Okay, we've got compilation. Uh, we're gonna go skim through all this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we've got some Warhammer novels. And yeah. the history of Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer 40k, which is quite interesting. Yeah, so this is the kind of real beginning of their world building, I guess, in, in novel form before Black Library and what they've got now. It's, yeah, I definitely had a couple of the, the 40k ones growing up. Um, again, I was probably too young to read them, but I remember having Deathwing and Inquisitor and um, a couple of the, the, the Dark Future ones as well. Um, but yeah, I never, never really got into the fantasy side of things. And I do apologise for the scan because the scan is not the best. I'm again <laughs> reading this from the uh, White Dwarf through the years on Facebook. It's a Facebook group that has all the files there. I'll leave a link in the show notes for that as well. If you want to go and check that out yourself, and then you can download and access pretty much every single White Dwarf that's ever been made, uh, probably up to a certain point. But yeah, uh, not not the new issues. I don't think, but pretty much all the old stuff. Yep. Uh, so yeah, it's got a nice little map here. I've been reading. Yeah, it's a shame it's spread across the two pages. Though it's one of those yeah. ones you want to stick up in a frame, really. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that, that is a shame. Not that it's changed very much. No, it's all so very familiar. Yeah, yeah list all the publications. It, there was no black library at this stage, so uh, mm-hmm. as far as I know. So um, yeah, all these were, were uh, published through Gangs Workshop. I tried to read Inquisitor and I tried to read Space Marine and I found them really hard reading. Yeah, they're, they're it tough it. going. Yeah, I've, I've tried a couple of times over the years and never got in. In fairness, I've, I've read quite a few of the more recent ones, um, the kind of Dan Abnett, Titanicus stuff, and um, what's the other one, Titan Death, um, just because I just kind of love my Titans, really. But um, but yeah, there's some, some of the ones are a bit more readable these days, but... Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of uh, a lot of background lore that I think you're expected to know before going into it. Should really make you set an exam before you start reading. One. So this is the old world timeline. Maybe this has been changed. It's got some funny things in here. It looks like it's all corresponding to the books, and like you say, 
Yeah. Like, like it's, it's basically they're fleshing out the history of the old world, uh, really, with all those novels. And um, someone must have orchestrated all of this beforehand, like, you know, told the authors, okay, this is what happens at this particular time. So whether they made the timeline in the books or whatever, I'm not really sure. But yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see that. How I mean, how yeah, how how close to the, the obviously they've blown it up now, but how close to the the last iteration of the old world it is? Because yeah, keeping that continuity going for thirty years with all the different authors involved, it must be must be nearly impossible. I think they must have to have to just make stuff up <laughs> and yep. wreck on it. <laughs> well, they're, they're notorious for changing things, so mm. no, no doubt they would have changed the timeline as well at some point. Yeah, for um, sure. Like, but yeah. But yeah, we saw the big transition from third to fourth edition where they really fleshed out all the army books and gave them all their own history, all the armies. Mm -hmm. But uh, Felix and Godric certainly got a, quite a few mentions in this uh, history here. So yep. that's nice to see. Still going strong as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still very much alive and going strong. Uh, now, this is the Games Day Gaming League Championships in 1991. Okay, so I think we covered this in another issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it was a different year, but um, very close around this time when they had all these gaming leagues happening. Uh, now we've got another entry here from Paul Robbins. That's the mm -hmm. Dwarf Landship. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm assuming that's a scratch build, is it? It's not. Wasn't a model, was it? Yeah, it says this has been a scratch built landship. But then yeah. I heard that um, I think Citadel Miniatures actually released a landship for the dwarves ah, cool. on the stage. So yeah. I don't know whether this was based off that particular original model. I've never seen it, uh, or whether this is complete scratch built one from the ground up. So I'm not really sure. But um, yeah, well, pretty yeah, impressive. Pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. And of course, this is the age where they had these kind of Plymouth bases, you know, wooden Plymouth bases, or they had like picture frames where they would build the base out of out of that yeah which is really cool and these be massive too don't they you know like back in these days oh absolutely that probably weighs a ton <laughs> probably yeah, weighs a doorstop. <laughs> <laughs> just taking it to the event would be quite scary wouldn't it <laughs> Adrian wild again with a second place command group i think he likes yeah. dark angels so we've got some oh definitely is i think it, uh, not to spoil it but he's got a, he's got an epic one coming up as well shortly i think as well yeah he does yep he does it's stunning yeah, are and this this rhino. Angels? Oops, sorry. What is it? Yeah, dark sorry, are these dark angels? I think they are. Yeah, they, they certainly look like a upscaled version of his um, dark angel he's got in his epic battle group. So I'm guessing he's got his own. Um, I've not seen that chat. Those sort of symbols before, though. I'm guessing he's done a bit of a homebrew there. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. But yeah, really nicely painted. I love that banner he did for that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Although the poor guy behind it is not getting much uh, face time for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that rhino as well. That that really, that really, for whatever reason, got me as a kid seeing that. Just to see the weathering and stuff on it. I think I think up until this point, it's all been very crisp and clean, all the heavy metal stuff, and seeing something that looked like it'd been living in the desert for for six months really, really did it for me. Yeah, it doesn't probably doesn't seem like it, but there's an awful lot of conversion work going in there. Oh yeah, yeah, I can, I can spot yeah lots of bits from Tamiya kits and the Land Raider hatch and everything in there as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, very nice indeed, and it's got the internal work as well. So yeah, it's a very nice entry that one. Right, we've got uh, looks at Steve Wingate with a really nice looking Goff command group here with a banner. It looks equally as awesome. <laughs> it looks snotling up in the top as well. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <clears throat> and. Um, David Knowles with his uh, second place diorama. Yeah, it's pretty impressive as well, the, the water effects and everything. I'm guessing that boat's probably a, a much smaller scaled Tamiya kit or something that's been uh, it's been kit bashed into, into 40k scale, so it's pretty pretty impressive. Yeah, mate. Yep. Like this is this is the age where anything goes, basically. <laughs> of course. You can find it, you can make it, you can build it, you know, just bring it in. So I think that's the way they sort of approach it, which is pretty cool, actually. I don't mind. Yeah, it, it was very open minded. Yeah. yeah, very much so. Here, here's here's, here's the Wild. good stuff. Yeah. yeah. This is the Dark Angel Space Marines and Warlord Titan and look really cool. Um, yeah. Which is in the Deathwing Company 
Is it a company? It must be a company. Five stands. Yeah, I mean it's it's the old it's the old Titanicus um, Space yeah. Marines first edition kind of formations. I think so. It's probably yes. Yeah, it's, it's not not how I know it these days, but yeah. It's just it's just the detail and he's went into he's done all the shoulder pads and the, the trim and everything, which is again it's it's not too difficult to do these days, but yeah, tough tough back then. And one thing that struck me was I don't know if this is. How, if this is like Titanicus and how it was played, but the the um, I, I'm assuming the jet bikes came in metal. That's right. Yeah, the jet bikes were on little um, metal flight stands, or kind of all, a, a single cast thing. He's um, he's chopped them off and stuck them onto the old classic hexagonal flying bases. Yes, yeah, so they're really cool. Oh, awesome. Yeah, this 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 predated this. I think this was just a few months before. Um, second edition epic came out so all these battle groups are the formation sizes are certainly not not what i'm familiar with but because that was the thing i think they had to be they had to be kind of street legal i believe to get into the competition for um, and for formation so you see that you see that in the 92 golden demon and going forward that they're they're split into kind of um, companies and and squad okay yes it's it's weird eh? because i've never seen like from like from space wing epic it's Mm -hmm. like like second edition i'm talking about it's completely different. Like you couldn't just have one single um, land raider unless it's like a part of a command squad. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. And two land speeders is really weird as well. Mm-hmm. So, well, there you go. That, 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 that clarifies it up then. I didn't actually know it was for the um, uh, its predecessor. So that makes yep. a lot of sense then. But some really good entries there. Richard uh, Bancroft with his wonderful dwarf command group. Given them, give them nice tall bases, so they're almost as tall as a... Uh, his empire yeah. guys in that. <laughs> Very true. And then John Keane with his third place single miniature champion slash, another classic jazz with him. All right. Now we've got Adrian Wink, another another name that was uh, very prevalent in the 90s. And Adrian thankfully got to win his Golden Demon many years later. So I'm really happy for Adrian because he persistently entered uh, GW again with Orcs, uh, a lot of green skins. And um, his banners and shield designs were very iconic at that time because they always had this bad moon symbol on it. Mm-hmm. And you can see like the, the, the tarpaulin that he's got on these battle wagons, it's got a big hole in it. Yeah, it's really yeah. well done. Um, ah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's good to see, good to see them kind of dirtied up as well. They're not, not quite as clean cut as some of the... Some of the uh, battle wagons you see going around. And down below, we've got a uh, vignette, a Titan hanger. Yeah, it's a funny one. This it's, I, I only re- recently realised when I was looking at it that it's meant to be a it's the Dark Mechanicum. It's meant to be a kind of traitor legion um, kind of facility. So they, they put all the kind of um, you know the hounds' heads and everything. And then, but the actual Titan head itself looks it looks like it's a Halloween mask or something. Yeah, it's maybe <laughs> it's, made of it's yeah, really creative. Yeah. Anyway, it's one of those one of those things that probably. You know, I'm not sure how long you'd want to have it sitting on your shelf for, but uh, you, know, you could probably turn it back into some Necromunda train or something. But yeah, it's really nice. We got a Horus HQ Titan Maintenance Hanger 74. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Um, then we've got uh, Ivan Brooks with his third place vehicle, Walk Free Buddha wa- Battle Wagon. Oh, I love this one. Yeah. So I was never a massive Orc fan, but I loved Orc Pirates. I loved the Freebooters. Yeah. Um, Again, that's probably from the from the cover art from the, the Dave Gallagher cover art as well. Was it's got orc, orc, those orc pirates attacking the Terrans and Terrans look scared. It's fantastic. Just love the grins on them. Yeah, they're cool, aren't they? Yeah, I really like yeah. those particular pre-booters actually. They're really, really nice. A lot of character to them. Especially the peg leg guy. <laughs> yeah. um, and the little Gretchen up there with his uh blunderbuss on top there on the on the mast, top of the mast. Yeah. So yeah, but it looks like there's a lot of work going into the wheels. Are the wheels all been changed and um, converted? Yeah, that's right. It's got the it's got the railings as well, oh. the classic kind of pirate ship railing as well. It's fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Mark Wakefield with his second place monster, the Great Demon of Nurgle, of course, Big Papa Nurgle. Yeah, it's looking quite slim in that one. To be fair, it's not the yeah, it's the old sculpt, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all we've all went that we've all went that way, especially with lockdown. In fairness, we've all uh, filled it a bit. I think I have done too, mate. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> For years, I've certainly turned into a bit of a Papa Nurgle in many respects. Okay, the grand finalists. Here we go. Um, mm-hmm. So we've got Paul Robbins again with his Elder Avatar. We've got Martin Matthews, a Space Marine captain. And we've got Colin Ferrant 
with his Dark Angel Deathwing Captain and Bradley Wells with his Freebooter Commander Group. Very cool indeed. Yeah, they're awesome. With the black, black rimmed bases because back in those days. That's and, it. And I really like that too. I really like that contrasting effect of the bases. So you have like a black rim, green, yeah. green top. So it really bring, pops the, um, the miniature and all the colors on it. Of course, I'm a, I'm a goblin green, you know, convert, converted now and everything has to be goblin green, but I really like the old hammer style. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's funny, like the, the goblin green, yeah, I, th I think I think it's only really through seeing the golden demon entries that I got inspiration to do basing other than goblin green over the years. Because I think you're so kind of indoctrinated to seeing goblin green from, you know, the early 90s white dwarfs that you just assume that there's no other way of doing it. <laughs> but there is other ways. There is other ways, and, and yeah, certainly... You know, pre second edition, pre fourth edition fantasy, it was all kind mm -hmm. of just Wild West kind of stuff, like, you know, yeah. codes. Um, and in a sense, it was a lot more creative. The, the painters had a lot more creative freedom, especially the studio painters mm -hmm. and the Golden Demon entrance. They had a lot more freedom to express themselves in whatever way and whatever ability they had. And yeah, I, I, I appreciate that era for that yeah definitely okay it looks like that dark angel captain has popped up so many times now so <laughs> again. same with these uh, terminators as well i think this was just these um all these different terminator sculpts have been released and they were they were obviously the, the hot the hot new thing because they're, they're all over the place and how good is that traitor terminator guy yeah that's amazing it was that was back when it was real creative chaos <laughs> chaos in the truest sense of the word yeah, that's but right. it's so well done as well though it's so clean like it doesn't look like it's just been you know, the paint's been splattered on him. He's, he's, he's about 10 different colours, but they're all perfectly set. It's great. I love that traitor cultist commissar guy as well. I hadn't seen him before um, until reading this one. And it's just like, yeah, it's the, the pose is great. Yeah, very cool. Wonderful stuff there, guys. It's good. And then we've got here, looks like the sort of large miniature category. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some really weird stuff here. Slan Riding Dragon. Yeah, okay. don't see many slan these days. <laughs> so. oh, thank goodness. And uh, we've got John Toyer, Goblin Riding Chaos Spawn. Yeah, it's very, very John Blanche-esque, isn't it? That one, it's kind of... Yeah, they went through that sort of beige area. <laughs> everything, mm. was, everything was beige and everything was like painted in beige. I don't know why. Yeah, it's something I can appreciate yeah. now, but I remember looking at that back in the day and just thinking, I can't I can't work out what it is. <laughs> me me yeah. either. I couldn't work out what was what. So it was mm -hmm. really strange. I don't know. Yeah, maybe John started it. I don't know, but... Mm. It seemed to be a phase that people were going through at that time. Uh, we've got a an ogre here. One of them looks like a marauder ogre. It's really cool. Then we've got Richard Gunson. That was my former uh, manager at Games Workshop back in oh, okay. 94. He uh, oh. was also a very accomplished painter, and he mm. did his uh, ogre command group, which was really, really cool as well. Yeah. Again, that banner's fantastic. Is that freehanded as well? Yep, free hand as well. Yep. Oh. So very, very old hammer. Looks like some Bob Ollie uh, yeah. ogres here, right? <clears throat> so we've got uh, Sarah Rogers again with a Space War Command Group. They're really quite an interesting looking banner. Yeah, it's quite cool. They've, he's, he's done kind of camo on the Space Space Wolves as well, which is kind of interesting. I know that was a kind of that was a bit of a rogue trader uh, callback. There's quite a lot of you know all the chapters had their kind of camo to go with them. You, you rarely saw, but I just think it's quite smart. It's, one of, it's, it's obviously difficult to see on the desktop or the, de the tabletop if you uh, if you've got a fully camouflaged army on a, on a camouflaged table. But yeah, it does look great. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to go through the other entries here. There's some really nice stuff here, preferably especially at Steve Wingate's Plague Marine of Nurgle. <laughs> I really like that particular entry, it was very nice. Uh, the squats look pretty cool with all that, the jet packs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, jump packs, jump packs, jet packs, jump packs. Yeah, yeah, jump packs. Yeah, I guess that's <clears> another <throat> pirate pirate group he's made of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, Barry Lee's again with his Chaos Warrior. For something not uh, green skinned at all. Mm. It's completely cool, cool different, which is quite wonderful. And then yeah, some other entries there, which are quite nice. We've got some more large creatures here. Some ogres. It's like a greater demon. Yeah, it's the it's the really old Creator Demon sculpt. It's a bit, a bit, uh, a bit funky looking now. <laughs> in yeah. And we've got another, it's got another Terminator Command Group 
by Ben Clark, Peter Cook, Bad Moon Command Group. Very nice as well. And a uh, noteworthy mention here from Alan Herworth with his Ultramarine Captain and Terminator Armor. That's quite a nice little miniature too. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. With the Tzinchian sort of vibes here, we've got uh, one of the classic Jez Gordon Chaosaurus is a Tzinch and, of course, the Lord of Change. Um, yeah. We've also got a mounted high elf champion. <laughs> yeah. And another demon, great demon slash from Sarah Rogers. Sarah Rogers put quite a few entries in this, this year. Yep, so very nice, notable entries there. Now, US and Canada... Yeah, these, these are great as well. I think it's I think it's quite funny because obviously I don't know how they got the photos over to the UK if they were sent you know sent a pack of them if they scanned them in or something because everything's got a bit of a kind of blue wash to it. Everything's got a bit of a kind of yeah, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. A blue filter over it almost. So it's kind of I don't know for whatever reason that just stuck in my mind ever since seeing them. No, you're sure actually right. That maybe I, I noticed that as well. So yeah. I don't know why that is, but yeah. But the Chris Murphy second place miniature Blood Angel Terminator, I think that was that was seen in other white dwarfs as well. Mm. Um, but that's a really stunning looking paint job. Uh, but yeah, I think all every time the US and Canadian entrants really pulled out some really amazing looking entries every year. Yeah, definitely. They're absolutely stunning, some of them. And that was that. So it was awesome. Yeah. Back into time there at 91. <laughs> uh, Golden Demon. So this is a fantasy role play, one of a fantasy role play adventure. Now, of course, me and Craig don't play one of fantasy or haven't played this particular adventure, but maybe you have. Please let us know if you have taken this adventure into your games of Warhammer role play. Again, I was always into the art, um, mm -hmm. looking at a lot of these yeah, Martin McKenna artworks yeah. that he put into the books. I really, really love those portraits he did of all the characters and that kind of thing. It really, there's something about those drawings that um, uh, just captivated me. Yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, I think I think what they're trying to do here is they're trying to pull the characters out of the books and, and give you their, their stats for um, for using them within the fantasy role play. So again, it was that trying to cross over, trying to, trying to pull you from, you know, get you in as a gateway drug and then pull you into something larger as, as they've always tended to do. So here we go, the White Dwarf subscription offer. Uh, so back in the day, <laughs> for UK people, it was twenty pounds for one year. It's not bad. Yeah, at all. I don't know. It's still, it wasn't cheap. It wasn't cheap back then either. Yeah. But you know, but yeah, some definitely, definite, definite uh, nostalgia pangs when I see all those front covers there, though, especially the like I say from one one three one onwards. I, I seem to remember all of those. And we've got Space Fleet now. <laughs> Me and Craig don't know anything about Space Fleet. Who plays Space Fleet? <laughs> I don't know who plays it because I don't. Yeah, know I think I think it. I think Gordon Gordon used to play it back in it, back yeah. in the day. Yeah, it's it's that it's that really weird one where the you know you rolled in the or you threw the dice into the top lid of the box to your actions. It was, it was really it was one of these ones. that was kind of a I think it was meant to be like a kind of entry entry into Games Workshop again, similar to the Milton Bradley stuff, but it was a, it was like a bookshelf or a, what was it, a bookstore game where, they, where they'd sell it, you know, in, yep. in toy stores and everything. And it was quite a simple game. It was really, you know, there wasn't much to it. But in this, the rest of this um, White Dwarf's dedicated to really fleshing out into what almost becomes like a full-blown like 4X space simulator type type thing um, on the tabletop. So, yeah, they really, they really went wild with it here and there. Uh, created rules for everything from like boarding actions and dropping your fuel canisters and diplomacy and everything it's it's, it's pretty cool if, if, if you're in a space fleet if you're one of the, the 10 people that bought it then uh then yeah. you love it yeah but obviously a lot of this probably fed later on into um, the likes of battlefield Cl uh, battlefleet gothic and um kind of other other space games i'm sure this is probably pretty formulative for all those yeah, and I need to ask about like the history of this because I've got I've got a box set of uh, Imperial Guard epic um, sp uh, epic miniatures, which is like the original box set, mm -hmm. and inside on the inside cover, yeah, that's play, right. It's got an ad. It's got an ad mm -hmm. for Battlefleet Gothic, but using mm -hmm. the same picture for Space Fleet. Yep, and that's something and, that's always confused me. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it was ever I don't know if it was ever released as Battlefleet Gothic. It was or kind it was of like always... a mirrored image that was like inverted, mm -hmm. and then that's right, yeah. they 
they had the uh, other mirrored image for Space Fleet. So there's some reason. I know Richard Halliwell created a space, like a space game, like a space combat game. I'm mm-hmm. thinking that's what it was. And oh, okay. maybe this was kind of like a second iteration of that, mm-hmm. a more simplified form, and they sort of elaborated it more and indulge more in giving special rules and that kind of thing later on. Yeah. That, yeah. Again, I don't know anybody who ever played it. I never see the miniatures pop up anywhere. So it's a bit of a black hole, that one, I think. Yeah. So anyhow, we've got the grand, uh, Liverpool grand opening here on the Saturday, Saturday, 17th of August. If you did attend this grand opening, please leave us know in the comments. I would love to see people's reactions to what that was like back in those days when you see those big piles of games <laughs> that kind of thing did you ever attend a grand opening mate no i didn't no i used to frequent the, the glasgow store you know once once every so often but never never made it along to a grand opening here we got the marauder uh catalog pages here for the dwarves these are the iron breakers of course and the marauder giant i think that was that giant made of lead or was that a Plastic Absolutely, kit. Mate. metal, mate. Yeah, yeah geez. One of those. gorgeous. It's one of the most. It's one of the most sought after models mm-hmm. on the market. Yeah, you, you pay quite a lot of money for those if you got one of those. Definitely. Now in your, in your bits box or whatever, but um, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah it looks like they're fleshing out the uh, fleshing out the adeptus mechanicus here and the like and the astronomica and everything again. It's not. It's it's, it's all good. Good good lore and the uh, lovely pictures you get, especially the, the Jess Goodwin concept art for a lot of the uh, ship's crews and the Eldar um, pilots and everything is really nice. And if people, if the viewers don't mind, I think we're going to skip those pages because uh, I think they're kind of, you know, uh, and again, that sort of, that sort of gray area where we don't know much about, but they're good, good law to, to read through and that kind of thing. Yes, worth a read yeah, for sure. We're looking at the mail order pictures just quickly, we've got some Blood Bowl elves. We've got the Blood Bowl chaos uh, figures here, including some chaos dwarves. Did you ever play Blood Bowl? Man? No, I didn't. It never really appealed to me. I don't know why. But I guess it just wasn't much of a sports fan in it. But, um, but I've seen quite a few people getting into it recently again, and it does look pretty cool. Yeah, it's a really good game. Uh, the second edition models are fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so much character and yeah, I really prefer the second edition models actually over the third ones, to be honest. What what edition is this we're looking at? Is that... This is all second edition. This is all second edition. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way they, they've almost reused quite a lot of the fantasy and forty k sculpts, but they've just kind of changed the given them helmets or given them <laughs> kind of. Yeah. yeah, well, that, that was body armor stuff. It made them a bit more unique in second edition because they gave, you know, like third edition was more like that sort of like just remove the weapons and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and made them sort of like these uh, blood bowl players. But uh, in second edition, they were very quite quite more unique, I think, in many. Right. Like the dwarves, for example, you know, they're, they're fully kitted out in um, NFL gear. Yeah, they almost just look like forty k squats in these ones, but that's the, that's the old iconic death roller. Though I, even even I know the, the dwarf death roller, having never played the game. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, lovely little models, lots of character, and Space Fleet, the game that no one yeah. knows about, and it's quite a mystery. No, I think these are very rare these days. I remember I, I did spot some guys talking about it on the old hammer forums and talking about trying to get back into it and collecting models, but I think it's a it's a tough one. And this is the back cover, mate. So we've got yeah, saving the best for last. I mean, that, <laughs> to me, that elder army is just just total chef's kiss. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's just so good. And again, I think I, I hadn't really seen these um, elder knights before, and it wasn't until really recently I discovered that they, you know, they existed in the during the kind of Titanicus days. Um, but they never they never put rules in them for. Um, for second edition, as far as I know, apart from maybe in the Citadel journals. So yeah, yeah they're they're quite quite weird looking things. Um, but yeah, I'd love to get hold of some of those at some point. Yeah, they're really cool models, aren't they? They're wonderful. Mm-hmm. So if you can get a hold of them, yeah, definitely do that. But yeah, lovely colour scheme on the older epic stuff. Yeah, it's like kind of crackling effect he's done is really really yeah, smart. Yeah, really cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's really really unique. Mm-hmm. And then the world here is just. Yeah. 
And you've got some more world eaters down there, just up to no good, up to no good in the forest. We're like collecting skeletons with its skeletons on the rack on the side. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Quite cool. Um, but lovely banner. Oh yeah. With a yeah I mean that, that's the real that's the real that's selling point of that whole thing, I think, is that banner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh I love the fact that they've got all these fantasy um uh beastmen in the front here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even better. I think one's been converted, one of the champs has been converted, so he's, he's carrying a bolt pistol or something. <laughs> but, yeah, really yeah, that's great stuff. And the guys uh, modeled a some kind of bones to put on the front of the. the oh yeah, the, the kind of corn symbol. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, really cool. But again, like I said, it's the age of where you can be really, really creative, mm -hmm. and anything will sort of go. Really, like there was no sort of definitive um, set template where you should, you know, not move out of. I think later on they sort of made it very restrictive. Yeah. But I can really appreciate, yeah, the earlier, early GD stuff. It's really good. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Anyhow, Craig, well, thank you very much. That was issue 140. I hope you enjoyed your time back. And yeah, it was great. Great trip down memory lane. Loved it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man, I, I really enjoyed looking through this issue with you, mate, for, for sure. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. No problem. Anytime, mate. So until next time, guys, thank you very much for for watching today and craig take care of yourself mate and uh look forward to seeing what's coming up with the life of die with you and gordon in the near future cool cheers keep you posted okay thanks mate take care thanks for watching and please don't forget to go and check out our podcast the hero hammer fanzine our other guests talking about their first white dwarves and please consider becoming a patreon all the links in the show notes below and thank you very much for watching this episode of My First White Wolf and see you again next time.